So the last thing to do is uh, check if the user has actually answered the poll. And by doing that, we're also going to be pulling in the user's answer as well. We're not going to be displaying the user's answer. I'll leave that to you to decide where to display. But what we're then going to be doing is more interestingly collaborating the results of every vote for that particular poll and then representing them as a percentage. So let's go ahead and start to do this now. But before I do that, I'm actually going to switch over to a different user and then I'm going to cast a couple of votes. So let's go on poll two and let's say I love polls. And on this one, let's say it's all right. And then let's choose an ID, a user with an ID of three as well. And let's go ahead and uh, just submit a couple here. Uh, in actual fact, we'll do four as well, just so we can get a really good representation of this. So say this, and then we'll say this. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of data in here just to play around with in terms of percentage. We're lucky that we can uh, test these quite easily because if three users vote all on one separate uh, item, that's 33.3333. So we know that that will be represented. Anyway, let's go ahead and start to do this. So we need to change a few things around inside of our poll.php file because as it stands, we're just automatically getting the poll choices. What we want to do down here is we want to get the user answer answer for this poll. That may not exist, but we're going to query for it and then we're going to check whether the user has completed the poll or not. And then if the user has completed the poll, we're going to bring back all of the answers, uh, collaborative answers. Otherwise, we're then going to get the poll choices. So let's just do this if statement now so we know that it's there and we understand how it works. And then we'll create the query in a moment. So here we're going to say if completed um, we want to do something otherwise we want to get the poll choices we don't need to get the poll choices if the user has already completed the poll there's no need they've already completed the poll we don't need the list of choices they'll come through the stats anyway now if the user has completed uh, in here we want to get the or get all answers or something Okay, great. So let's go ahead and focus on this query up here. So get the user answer for this poll. So I'm going to call this answer query. So we're going to prepare here. And in here, we're going to um, basically select from the poll answers where the user ID matches the current signed in user. And the data that we're going to be selecting is pollschoices.id because remember we want to pull back the choice that the user has made. Uh, and again, we're not going to be displaying this, but at least then we have it in the query and we'll see this when we do a print R. And we're going to alias this as choice ID. And we're also going to select from polls choices the name. And we're going to call this choice name. So we alias that as choice name. And that is coming from polls answers, which doesn't make too much sense because we're using the polls choices table. But again, we're going to join this data. So we're going to join polls choices and that's on the polls answers choice where that matches the choice ID. We're linking these two together. So on polls answers dot choice where that equals polls choices dot ID and we want to only pull in the answer where the uh, where the answer has been answered by the current logged in user ID so here we want this to be uh, the user that's currently logged in uh, in our case if we look that's four but let's change this to one just to uh, demonstrate so we're going to say where polls answers dot user equals and we'll add a user placeholder and polls answers dot poll equals poll which makes sense because we only want the answer where the user has answered that particular poll makes sense 
So let's uh, execute this and then we'll examine what we get back from this. So answer query execute and we need to pass in the user here which obviously comes from our session and we're not checking the users logged in by the way but that's sort of up to you and your authentication the way that you handle authentication if you have it and then we uh, pop in the poll as well which is represented by the ID variable up here so let's do Uh, some pre tags to preserve the formatting there. And let's do a print R on answer query and we'll fetch an object here. So when we go through to this, um, we obviously have an undefined variable here because we um, aren't setting that at the moment, but ignore that for now. This is now representing the choice that I made as user one. And we can we can uh, confirm this by saying, well, we're on poll one up here. So poll one, where user ID is one, is choice one, which we know is there. So that's giving me the uh, choice I made on here. So we know that that's working. Well, we don't really know it's working, so we've not done enough testing. Either way, we, you know, in theory, know it works. But now what we want to do is determine, has the user completed the poll? So we're going to create a completed variable here, which will allow us to uh, make use of this. So we're going to say completed, and we're going to do a ternary operator. We're going to check the row count on this answer query. So row count will just basically return the amount of rows. Uh, in this case, if the user has completed the poll, this will return one row. So if this is returning uh, one, we say, well, it is, it is completed. So we set this to true. Otherwise, we set this to false. So we now have this completed variable, and we're going to use this in two ways. This way, and we're also going to use this down here because we don't need to output the choices to the user if they have completed the poll, obviously. So what we can do is down inside of our view, if you like, we are going to say here, if completed, then down here, we can do an else. And then down here, just after our last if statement on here, we do an end if. And then we pull this in and if completed I'm going to say you have completed this poll thanks uh, completed so we now get the following you have completed the poll thanks we have completed uh, do you like polls poll this one doesn't have any question uh, any choices so it's a bit useless at the moment but there we go you've completed the poll thanks we're not displaying the options. Let's just for the sake of it get rid of this row here that represents me completing this poll number one just so we can see the options here and uh, see the difference on poll number two where we have voted. So you've completed the poll, thanks. We don't want to stop there, we want to actually output uh, down here the uh, user's uh, choices. So basically uh, the percentage based on that. So up here when we say if completed get all answers this is useless to us, but we want to get all of the answers that have been made. Um, we want to get them as a percentage. So we're going to call this answers query. And this is going to be a prepared statement again. because we're going to uh, inject some variables in here. OK, so uh, this is a little bit more complicated. We're going to be doing a sub query to select the count of all of the answers and then we're going to uh, express that as a percentage and then pull that back. So this would probably be better written within SQL Pro. I'm going to do it within here, but then we'll paste it into SQL Pro and just see how it looks. So we obviously want to select the name of each choice um, because we obviously want each choice for this poll with a percentage of how many people have answered next to it. So polls choices dot name. We know that we want that. Now I'm just going to pull this down just for readability because what I'm going to do is here 
I'm going to select count pulse answers dot ID. We're going to multiply this by 100 and then divide it by the um, count of answers. So we want to do a subquery here. I'm going to pull this down to do the subquery. So we're going to select count on asterisk. You can count on any field, say ID or something like that, but I'll leave it as asterisk. From polls answers, where polls answers dot poll equals the specific poll. Because what we're doing is we're counting the answers. Uh, and we'll do a where down here for this as well, or this here as well. Um, but then we obviously want to uh, make sure that we're pulling it only in for that poll. And what we're going to do is we're going to alias this as percentage. So this comes from polls choices, i.e. this here. But we obviously need to join the answers to this because we have choices mate we have choices here but we need the uh, answers that have been made for this particular poll otherwise it doesn't make sense so we're going to do a left join and the reason we're doing a left join is because um, these choices can exist even if an answer even if a particular answer for that choice doesn't exist so for example and to put this simply, you can have three choices, but it doesn't mean that a answer has been made for each of these choices. There might be 10 for this, 20 for this, and none for this. So we still want to display each of the choices regardless of whether they have an answer or not. And that's why we do a left join. So left join on polls answers. And we obviously do our standard on. So we want to say polls choices to ID equals polls answers dot choice and just to clear that up polls choices dot id here obviously relates back to this choice so choice matches this id we know that and let's head back to here um this is slightly tricky oh no actually let's do the where clause here so where polls choices dot poll equals poll because for this we want to make sure that we're pulling it in only where the uh, poll ID matches the one that we're currently looking at. And then we want to group by polls choices to ID. So group by, and I'll explain why we do this in a moment, polls choices to ID. We group by this because we have choices here with a unique ID. If we group by them, it means that we know that we're pulling in these um, items and then next to them we'll have the choice. Otherwise, things will get a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to place it into SQL Pro inside of here. I'll make this a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to see. Paste this in and then I'm going to change this poll to 1 and this here to 1. So let's run this and you can see here that we actually get our representation of the name of the particular option for poll one and then the percentage of answers so at the moment we've got i hate it at zero so let's um change that so under init let's uh say user id of five goes over to oh is this poll two do you like polls i oh, know what do you think of the new website so we're on poll id of one remember i'm going to select an option that is currently a percentage of zero and then submit that answer now when we run the same query again we get this change so we've got 25 percent here and then 50 percent here so we know this is working um, if you're struggling with understanding the query just go over it and sort of understand that we're selecting the eat the choices by name here the percentage is all of this so we're doing a sub query to select all of the answers and then forming a percentage from that. And then we're joining on the tables just simply because we need to. So it's um, fairly straightforward, but you know, if you're just getting started with this, it can be a little bit overwhelming. 
Anyway, what we want to do now is more importantly actually um, execute this, passing in the poll uh, as our for our placeholder. Then we want to extract the answers and just output them to the user. So we're going to say answers query execute. And then inside of here, we want poll to be ID. And then we want to extract the answers like that. So we just do a while loop here and we assign row for each loop. We say answers query, we fetch an object for this. And then we add that to this answers array. So we've now got this answers array that we can actually output down here once the user has completed the poll. So quite simply, we can just do a for each loop. So for each answers as answer. We can end that there. And we can actually, just to test things out, do a print R on answer just to make things a little bit clearer. So we voted on this. Oops, we've got an uh, unexpected end if. Oh, of course, that's a end for each, not an end if. Um, ah, okay. So let's head up here. Obviously, that needs to be. Uh, sorry, here. For some reason, I've added this as double quotes. There we go. Finally sorted. Okay, so we've now got a, um, a few objects here. We've got the name of the option. We've got the percentage. So this is to quite a few decimal points, but we can fix that with the number format function within PHP. Um, so now that we know that these are output, what we can actually do here is wrap this in an unordered list. And within here, have our list item. So I want to output the choice name and then in brackets I want the percentage. So the choice name is easy. It's just answer name like that. So I love it, it's all right, I hate it. We've got 0% at the moment because we have that hard coded, but let's now output the percentage and then we'll look at formatting it. So echo answer percentage like so and then we just add the percentage afterwards so we now get the following but that's obviously to quite a few decimal places but we know the data is correct so all we need to do is wrap this in number format and what we can then do is define how many decimal places we want this to so it's entirely up to you I'm just going to do it for to two to demonstrate that this can be the case you can obviously just do it to uh, one or, or, or no decimal points. So we've now got the uh, fact that we've completed the poll. We're outputting the, all of the options for this particular poll. Um, for example, if we were to add another option onto this, so uh, polls choices content, let's add a new one for poll one. And I'll just put blah for, for an example. There we go. We've got blah with 0%. And let's go ahead and again change myself to user ID of six. And when I refresh, I obviously haven't answered this because I've just changed the user ID. So when I hit blah and submit it, then we go through to, we should have gone through to there. Let's just check out why that might have been. Let's head over to poll, uh, to, uh, to vote, sorry. Ah, there we go. We might need an exit just after that. So. Again, let's alter the poll. Uh, let's alter the user ID. And then I'm going to select blah. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that this is changing. You can play around with it and you can output whatever you want, wherever you want. It's fairly open. But essentially, that's it. We've created the ability to vote on a particular poll and then see the uh, answers for the users that have voted for each of them polls.